rated too low. He's going to win the whole thing. And they're like, well, you're not having matches at 152. They're like, they're like I, we can't do anything. It's criteria. He goes, I'm just going to tell you, he's going to win the whole thing. Well, <laughs> here we go. All right, so we got Horvath from Brother Martin, the youngest of the Horvath boys, versus Nick DiGirolamo from Holy Cross, the machine coach, the guy we were talking about earlier in the semifinals. It's just, he's got one speed. Yeah, he does. He does. And look, Rory Horvath has been a different wrestler. Those 14 losses are extremely misleading. He probably took three in California, a bunch at the beginning of the season. Ever since mid-January, Rory Horvath has been on a tear. Two big wins in both dual meets against Jeswood. One to secure the victory in the last match of the night. Then Rory comes back in the Louisiana Classic, surprises everyone as a AC, makes the finals. Nicholas DiGirolamo, though, man, he's just, yeah. like we said, it's the two speed stop and kill. Horvath, Horvath had a great semifinal. I mean, he was dominant overshot from Jesuit in that semifinals match. Here we go. They both come out in good position, good hand fighting. Nicholas in on that leg. And a nice easy Return. takedown. Nice there easy you go. Down there. He's learning. <laughs> Now, he's just such an impressive physical athlete. I think a lot of times, guys this age, they don't understand how explosive and strong they are. No. They get that lift, and that guy's eight feet in the air before they know what to do Look, with it. This is, this is a kid who carries a 4.0 grade point average. Uh, Nicholas does. Horvath carries a 3.8. Uh, Nicholas goes to football practice, you know, a good bit of the year, is studying, and then he's wrestling. And, man, he just, you can do two sports. Yeah, you really can. And should. I, you yeah, should. I think it, this really helps. His football helps his wrestling and vice versa. Well, look, I can tell you as an athletic director, I tell every kid, if you can play two high school sports, you should play two high yep. school sports. Because guess what? That athletic window, when it shuts, it's gone forever. 100%. And then yeah. you'll be playing USTA tennis like me. Yeah, you're playing you're playing beer league softball and nobody cares about USTA it. USTA tennis at Terrytown Country Club, which is, has cracks in the court and holes in the yeah. net. Enjoy every ounce <laughs> of competing when you can, because it goes it, it goes quick. Yeah, Nicholas and, and, and Rory here are two kids that have come up through the kids' club. Do you feel uneasy? Irritable? Does your internet bill make you um, both probably started at five, six years old. Had wrestled national tournaments. There's Nicholas here oh, looking for a finish. Going off that the bat and stops, and you would think, oh, he loses his hip pressure, but is able to able to pull him back in and finish. 30 seconds here going the first. And 160 pounds for state champion division three from Emmanuel Christian, Michael Gilbert. 20 seconds here. DiGirolamo on top, in control. Yeah, looking for a tilt, but I think he's quite simply quite happy to come out of this round. Four to one, he really hasn't been threatened. He's gotten to his offense. And we're going to go three, two, one. He's got two losses on the season, Coach. You know what those two Yeah, losses? one loss was out at the Border Wars to a D1 commit. Okay. And his other loss was to Aiden Renzi of Fountain Blue when he had just come his back. His first match yeah. back, yeah. His first match back. But I, I tell you what, obviously that match wasn't a complete fluke because Aiden yeah. Renzi came out here and put on a show against Gunnar Gidry in the finals. So Horvath goes down, DiGirolamo on top, and there's just one of those very physical returns. Yep. And look, man, that takes the toll yes. out of wrestlers. The more times you do that in a match, you're going to take the toll. You're going to wear your opponent down. We're talking about that Holy Cross wrestling and how physical all, even those young guys are. I mean, he's obviously the alpha in that room, and you can tell that those other guys are starting to take on his personality of just being hard-nosed, physical wrestler. Everything yeah. is violent, you know? Yeah, let's, and look, if these guys can add another 20 kids to their roster, um, they're going to be they're going to be a force with all these young kids in the future. DiGirolamo in on a shot there. Look, I love the tenacity here. Still in, still in. He just needs to take him to the mat and there it two is. takedown. All right, so six to two, DiGirolamo with about a minute twenty left. They're going to reset him there. And if you're Horvath, Coach, what do you think? you got to get one, right? you got a minute 20. I mean, not out of it yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Keep there, wrestling. There's no quit in this kid. He's got nothing to lose out here. Brother Martin's in third place. So the team title's out of their reach tonight. But they'll be, you know, he'll be back next year with another strong team. 
But you know, he told me doing warm ups, he goes, I'm better, I'm going to be better than my brothers. And you know, his brother Rocco is off to a great start at Cumberland University. But now, good job getting to his feet. And there's the Nicholas one. Nicholas gives the one. So it's six to three. We're halfway through the match. DJ Ralmo with great footwork. Yeah. In and out, in and out. Ooh. First line of defense is your head, as you can see. And they, they definitely both used it there. I've been te coaching five-year-olds in the last couple weeks. We talk about triangle, head and hands, head and hands. And I love it. I love to watch the hand fighting right here. I mean, they're right in front of us. Good nice. shot off the map. A great see, shot. That's the thing about Nicholas. He will wrestle through the circle. As you saw there, he he didn't care that he was on the edge. He's like, I've got a shot here at the takedown. I'm going to look for it. What I'd like to see him do as he gets older is keep his back to the center and keep in that center. And here we go. Right Another there, takedown. Take so it's eight to three, 20 seconds Here's down to 20 seconds in the round. And I guarantee you, Rory Horvath is not going to stop fighting yeah. here. And look, he is capable of five-point moves. So, so he's so gonna, he'll still be in this. Nick's got the Turk. He's trying to elevate that foot. I think Horvath's in a pretty good position to defend it, though. All right, so we'll go to the third round. Did you will be up eight to three? And he wants to put him up. Yeah, watching Horvath in that semifinal, he's pretty tough on top, coach. He, he was really good on top in the semifinals. Road, road, road. It was a one-point match, and you kept thinking, all right, well, clearly, Judge is going to come get one, and he just rode yeah. the whole round. There you go. Horvath with a nice sweep single. I know Nicholas. Nicholas doesn't want to give up the takedown here. Oh, wow. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. You know, Nicholas has planned on going to the elite camp at Oregon State this summer, coached by Coach Pendleton. Um, they were able to see him uh, when they came down to work out at National Collegiate Doors. Um, you know, what a great opportunity. And, you know, we're talking about these club kids. You know, Jimmy Casaban with the Crusader Wrestling Club has done some, such an outstanding job. And I know he's sitting back in New Orleans probably enjoying this or maybe at his base St. Louis, his, his weekend retreat. Yeah. And, man, he's so super proud of these guys and what they're doing now at the, the big-time level. And that's why you work with the young kids, to yeah. get them ready for this. So, I mean, we talked about it in the preview show about how I felt and you felt that this year the weight classes were real top-heavy. Like, there was a dominant guy in, like, six or seven weight yeah. classes that just, just un, not unbeatable, but don't see it happening. And it's kind of panning out so far. It is. And I'd love to come back next week with a pay-per-view tournament. Really would, and pair some of these guys up. I mean, we could have, I think we could have five or six super matches. Um, and, you know, some of these Division Two kids, you move Rosas and Boudreaux. Yep. You know, maybe a little bit of talk of moving to two divisions next the year. The Johnson kid from Bazil. Exactly. Yeah. So here we go. Uh, Nicholas has the major. Right now he's up 12 to 4. I look for him to try to get a, a quick turn here, but if not, look for another takedown. How about a Dietrich Alamo Landry Barker matchup? Yeah, I was hoping we'd see that at some point this year. I would see two big boys battling out there. All right, Ben, I'm going to leave you solo for a minute. I'm going to go. Just me for 30 seconds. Dietrich Alamo, right, in control of the match. He's on top here. 12 to 8. He's got the major. 20 seconds left. Looks for them to break here on the edge. 17 on the clock. Horvath will go down. And again, can't say enough about the, the job that Coach George Benoit and the Holy Cross Tigers have done in this tournament. Just sophomores and freshmen all over the lineup, and they've really showed out. Currently in fourth place in the team standings. Ten seconds to go here. DJ Alamo is still on top. Six seconds, and you know he wants to keep this major. As the clock ticks down, that'll do it. And DJ Alamo, Nick DJ Alamo, the the sophomore, will take home his first state title. Great job this tournament, really just an incredible season. And he's just a guy that is just going to be a hard out for the next two years in Louisiana. Let's go, All right, now.